Hi, another of Mrs H's uh, little revision videos for paper three. This is again for the addiction topic and we're talking specifically about risk factors. So we've had one um, on genetic vulnerability. This is number two, stress. So just a reminder with risk factors, a risk factor is anything internal or external that increases the chances that someone will use an addictive drug or engage in an addictive behavior. In terms of stress, we, we know that increased risk of substance abuse and addiction is linked to prolonged stress, okay, stress over a long period of time, and also specific traumatic events in somebody's life. Um, how and why is it linked? Well, it seems that stress um, obviously causing a lot of anxiety and what people report that they drink, they smoke, they gamble, etc. when um, they are under a lot of stress as a sort of coping mechanism for their daily stresses and daily hassle. So how is it linked? At what stage? So stress will contribute to the initiation the startup of using a, a substance, but also long-term stress contributes to somebody becoming possibly addicted to that substance. So in other words, the maintenance of the abuse. Um, and also it can, stress can be linked to relapse as well. So all of the stages. How, is, how does this occur? Well, we could use uh, behaviorist, the behaviorist approach to explain this. So for example, through operant conditioning, that we're negatively reinforced by removing the aversive stimuli. So in other words, we're removing the stress when the substance is taken. So our stress, our worry, our anxiety, about financial problems, about work problems, about relationship problems, whatever, um, is removed perhaps when we drink a lot of alcohol, where we gamble, um, possibly you know, thinking that we might win a lot of money, um, we, get, we take other substances. So we're then also setting up a classically conditioned response. It's learning to associate relaxation with that substance or that activity. I think it's also important to point out that there are lots of mediating factors that are going to affect individuals differently. So these factors would be things like somebody's social support, how much social support do they have in terms of their work, their family, um, others around them, friends, etc., helping them. And also an individual's coping mechanisms of dealing with stress. So everybody deals with stress differently. And if somebody has good coping mechanisms, that's probably going to affect them very differently to somebody um, who is not able to manage their stress well. So it goes without saying that it's really important for individuals to find their own mechanism to deal with this. And I know that um, clinical psychologists and um, PWPs talk about the stress bucket and how we have to get rid of that stress and find a way of dealing with it. So that's always worth investigating as well. So stress seems to be linked to urban life. So living um, in cities, or towns with big populations. Okay, so there seems to be this correlation between um, the, the, the uh, place where you live, in other words, the population really, and, um, and our, our sort of addictive behaviors. Um, but we mustn't forget this is only a correlation. Remember, there is never a direct causal link in correlations. So there could easily be other factors that affect it. For example, more addicts could live in urban areas because of the availability of drugs, as much as living in these urban areas is causing increased stress. Also, addiction for sure causes stress. For example, the costs involved, social breakdown, and so on and so forth. So as much as stress causes addiction. So we've got to remember that these are correlational um, pieces of data that we're looking at. So let's have a look at the research. Okay, so Epstein, number one, Epstein found a strong correlation between the incidence of childhood rape and later adult alcohol addiction, but only in women diagnosed with PTSD. So therefore, this is not an inevitable relationship between childhood trauma and later addiction. What this suggests is the child would only develop an addiction 
if they have a vulnerability and later a stressful situation leading to PTSD. Further research comes from Anderson et al. They suggest early experiences of severe stress have damaging effects on the brain at a particularly sensitive period of development, thus creating a vulnerability to addiction by the time that person gets to adolescence or early adulthood. And a piece of research, Piazza et al. Rats were tested for vulnerability to stress. In other words, in this particular case, it was operationalized by pinching their tails. And they found that these rats were much more likely to seek out and ingest amphetamines the more stress they got. And we've got some evaluative points below. The thing we should also mention is, do, do addictions decrease stress? And despite the fact that many smokers, for example, say that they smoke to reduce stress, smoking actually increases stress levels. So let's go on to evaluate. First of all, cause and effect of stress is unclear. So is the addiction due to the stress or the stress is due to the addiction? Um, secondly, heightened numbers of substance ad dependency occur in poor urban areas, um, built up areas, cities, for example, and these correlate with high levels of stress. But perhaps this is due to the availability of addictive substances in these areas rather than the stress. In terms of the animal research, um, there are issues, as we know, over generalization. Okay, we have ma many more social factors that will play a part in our lives uh, rather than the rats, for example, in the Piazza study. Um, and also the validity of the research. How stressed are those rats? Could it be another factor causing them to ingest the amphetamines, like fear as opposed to stress? Um, and the other, but the, on the other hand, we should say a practical application is, could the link with stress be used effectively to develop a vulnerability measure to predict who is vulnerable to addiction or vulnerable to relapse due to stress? So it's, um, this, this sort of information may have a really good practical application. So that's the end of this um, topic, and we'll go on to the third one will be um, personality factors and also um, family influences and peers. So we'll do separate ones for each of those.